The Clippers signed John Wall in free agency and expect 2019 Finals MVP Kawhi Leonard to be fully healthy. Their depth features above-average veterans like NBA champion Norman Powell, an all-defensive team player Robert Covington, and one of the league's best stretch big men in Marcus Morris Sr. You can't forget about another bench weapon, the up-and-coming 25-year-old Terrence Mann, who's increased his scoring annually throughout his first three seasons. That improvement makes Terrence a potential breakout player in 2023's campaign. In terms of the starting five around the big three of Leonard, George, and Wall, Nicholas Batum is one of four active players across the league next to all NBA defenders in Anthony Davis and Draymond Green to post a stat line of five points, five rebounds, five assists, and five blocks within a game. So the question is, can LA do the seemingly impossible for their organization, which is win their franchise's first NBA title? Of course, doing so would mean getting through the four-time and reigning champion Warriors. So how does LA match up with the Dubs? Stay tuned for a breakdown of all that and more. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 15% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box for more content like this if you haven't already. Help this video and YouTube's algorithm by leaving a like, and make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. Now into the content. What an offseason it was for President of Ops Lawrence Frank and Special Consultant in the front office who we broke down in yesterday's video, Jerry West who significantly upgraded the Clippers roster. Let's get the obvious and concerning fact out of the way that John Wall has played less games than Dirk Nowitzki since 2017-18. Dirk, of course, retired several years ago. The five-time All-Star and All-NBA player missed the entirety of two of the last three NBA seasons. Considering that, Wall's going to have to work through significant rust in his game, and if he comes back playing like the 100 miles per hour Washington Wizards-esque version of himself, that style of play could lead Wall to re-injuring his bad hamstring, which of course no one wants to see. Luckily, despite the fact that John Wall will be 32 years old when the season kicks off in a few months, throughout his career, he's always been able to carve up a defense with his passing. That's what happened in 2014's playoffs when he swept my Raptors. John Wall's playmaking is an extremely underrated weapon in his bag. We're talking about a player who's averaged over 10 assists per game in at least 77 outings in three different seasons throughout his career, and has never failed to average under 7 dimes per night over his 10-year career in the league. Even if John has a bit of his signature explosive first step still left in the tank, that penetration off the dribble alone is going to open up seams in the opposing defense for this team's two top options to go off in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. If you're concerned about Wall's ability to get back to the player he once was, there's validity in that opinion. But in my view, the example of Klay Thompson missing two straight seasons and then bouncing back to nearly full form for the Golden State Warriors proves why Wall's going to bounce back himself. Modern technology is allowing players to get back faster and stronger than ever, no matter how much time they missed in the past. And yes, Wall's game revolves around his ability to get downhill in the open court, whereas Thompson's a three-point shooter, but as I mentioned, John's an underrated passer, and all he has to do is slightly adjust his game, and that'll open up everything for him. Just over a year ago on March 3rd of 2021, against the second-seeded Brooklyn Nets, John scored 36 points while dropping five assists in April of the 2021 season. Wall posted a vintage 22.1 points, 7.3 dimes, while taking seven three-point attempts per game and knocking down a decent 32% of those three-pointers. Wall's got a fundamentally sound three-point shot, and he's known for his athleticism, but the truth is, like his passing, the floor general's deep-range shooting has also gone overlooked. Of course, it's a shot that lacks consistency, but for the first time in John's career, he won't be tasked with carrying the majority of the offense. This time around, in the City of Angels, he'll have the assistance of two elite wing players. I broke down the trio of Kawhi, George, and Wall in my recent ranking of the top 10 big threes. Since they became a duo in 2019, with both of them at 100%, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George have realistically only had one shot at getting over the hump. However, there's no getting around that that one opportunity was completely squandered as Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic shocked them in the second round by winning in seven games. The next year, however, we can't fault the Clips for getting bounced in six to the Phoenix Suns with Kawhi Leonard being sidelined with an ACL tear. What if the injury never happens? In my personal opinion, I think the Clippers would have added their first ring. But staying healthy is, of course, all that matters in the ruthless 100-plus NBA marathon between the season and playoffs, 
as the last team standing physically wins 10 times out of 10. Luckily, if you're a Clipper fan, all the pieces will be lined up for this team to potentially achieve the ultimate glory in 2023. First, they'll have to get through the men who've thrown four championship parades for the Bay Area in Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green. You probably forgot about this, but John Wall made the all-defensive second team back in 2015. Additionally, the Clippers' new point guard has averaged at least one and a half steals per night in a staggering eight different seasons. Who knows how much lateral quickness and mental energy Wall has left, but his combination of strength and reactions in the passing lanes plus pesky one-on-one defense should be of real value for LA. Question is, can it have an impact on Stephen Curry? Slowing down Steph will of course be a bold, nearly impossible task, but it's the key to the Clippers finally getting out of the West after years of failure to do so. I'm going to leave it to you in the comments section. What's it going to take for the Clippers to win an NBA title? Best answer gets next video shout out, and the top five commenters with the most shout outs by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. So compete in Community Speaks by leaving your take on today's question. Yesterday, I asked who was right between JJ Redick and Jerry West. Today's Speaks winner is Julian Garcia, who says JJ does have a point because the NBA salary in the 60s wasn't close to what it was today, so players had to work during the offseason. But the way he says Bob Cousy played against plumbers and firemen makes it seem like Bob Cousy played against bums when he played with slash against a bunch of Hall of Famers. And Bob Cousy and Jerry West are the reason why guards that played after them do flashy passing and dribbling and shoot jump shots. And JJ shot jump shots in his career, and if JJ played back then, he wouldn't make the league because there were only eight teams during that time, and JJ was a catch-and-shoot role player with 30 teams in the league. JJ wouldn't even be talking on his podcast and ESPN if Jerry West and Bob Cousy didn't exist. So JJ better be on his knees thanking Jerry West and Bob Cousy.